On Wednesday, President Biden announced a sweeping effort to forgive up to $20,000 of federal student loan debt for Pell Grant recipients and up to $10,000 for all other borrowers making under $125,000 a year. He also changed uh, certain repayment plans that will increase the rates of loan forgiveness for advanced uh, graduate degree holders like doctors, lawyers, uh, and he extended the federal student loan payment pause through December 31st. This is a terrible, terrible, terrible and cynical decision that will cost more than half a trillion dollars. And it will punish the hardworking Americans they claim to want to help while slapping in the face all the Americans who worked hard to repay their loans or who didn't go to college or who joined the military and used the GI Bill. And it will give money to the well-off and to the higher education bureaucracy who for years have raised tuition while sitting on billion dollar endowments, much of which is invested in China, by the way. Even worse is the timing of this policy. First, we're already feeling the effects of record high inflation. This policy is gonna make it worse. As Jason Furman, the chairman of President Obama's Council of Economic Advisors put it, pouring roughly half a trillion dollars on gasoline, uh, pouring roughly half a trillion dollars of gasoline on the inflationary fire that is already burning is reckless. Totally agree with that, Jason. Uh, second, we know that the cost of higher education has been increasing for decades, and this new move by the Biden administration will cause the cost of higher education to skyrocket even further. So you're going to have more debt stacked on current and future students. This is why the New York Times called it a bad idea. The Washington Post called it regressive and expensive. The Wall Street Journal called it the worst domestic decision of the Biden presidency. They all say that it does nothing to address the college cost crisis. Even some Democrats, Democratic Senator Cortez Mastro from Nevada, has rightly agreed with that sentiment. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget says the overall amount of student debt will return to its current level in just five years. So as that happens, and as inflation-fueled higher prices for basic necessities continue, you can guarantee that having opened this Pandora's box, taxpayers will soon be asked to forgive even more student loans, once again, in the near future. So you have Democratic officials in the media saying this plan is reckless, it's ineffective, but above all, it does enormous damage to the Constitution. Enormous damage. Look at what President Biden's doing here. Okay, as, as I've said during Republican and Democratic administrations, the President of the United States does not have the power of the purse, meaning no president can use funds not appropriated by Congress to do whatever he wants. In fact, one of the reasons Congress exists is so that that doesn't happen. So check my record on this. Even though I support enhanced border security, I'm a border hawk, I support the border wall. I was clear in 2019 that President Trump did not have the authority to declare a national emergency to build a wall on the southern border and take money that Congress had appropriated for a different purpose in order to do something, even though I wanted that thing to be done. Now I'm saying the same thing, and I'm asking for my Democratic colleagues who lost their minds over Trump's emergency declaration to maintain some shred of intellectual consistency when it comes to a president of their own party going even further in terms of their abuse of emergency authority. Because Biden is invoking the COVID-19 public health emergency in order to wave a magic wand to forgive student debt. At this point, it has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with COVID-19. We're not in any state of emergency due to the pandemic. And even if we were, even if this were two years ago, canceling student debt would be completely unconnected from sensible pandemic mitigation efforts. The Department of Education agrees, by the way. Here, let me quote a memo to then Secretary of Education DeVos that states, quote, the secretary does not have statutory, statutory authority to provide blanket or mass cancellation, compromise, discharge, or forgiveness of student loan principal balances and or to materially modify the repayment amounts. Can't do it. Of course, the Biden administration, uh, their Department of Education conveniently removed this memory from the website, went down the rabbit hole. What's more, uh, Nancy Pelosi agrees. Just last year, Pelosi stated that the president does not have the power to broadly cancel student loan debt and that it has to come from Congress. It has to come from Congress. As one liberal think tank with ties to Pelosi put it, quote, the Anti-Deficiency Act passed by Congress in 1982 prohibits executive branch officials from spending money Congress hasn't appropriated. 
broad student debt cancellation would trigger the Anti-Deficiency Act because the Department of Education would be spending funds that have not been appropriated. Basic schoolhouse rock stuff here. This is how a bill becomes a law. This is Congress. This is the executive branch. But in recent years, we've seen an increasing trend where presidents have simply sidestepped Congress in pursuit of their preferred agenda. You know, Obama's pen and a phone. This is getting out of control. They're, pers- they're doing things that in many cases Congress has explicitly rejected. We saw that when Trump declared a national emergency to divert money for his border wall. Now we're seeing it with President Biden uh, using uh, the excuse of a pandemic that's now endemic to cancel student debt. There's no excuse for this behavior from the executive branch. But we have to be honest in Congress. We've enabled it by surrendering our constitutional powers for decades. We write vague law that the executive seizes upon and exploits loopholes in that law. Uh, the nas- national emergency statutes are the best example of that. And, and it's far past time for us to revisit those statutes. And President Biden's recent actions are a perfect example of how Congress's failure to do its job is eroding our constitutional order and delegitimizing Congress. Unchecked executive power is the cancer at the heart of our constitutional system, and it must be addressed before it consumes the entire body politic. And this is a whole nother level of constitutional nihilism we're talking about. We're not talking about just moving around a few billion dollars for a border wall here. The Biden administration is spending hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars in a politically motivated handout only months before a midterm election. These are the same career politicians that cried crocodile tears when Trump declared his emergency on the southern border. These are the same cynical people that campaigned on protecting democracy and restoring the soul of America. This is the president who campaigned on restoring normalcy, but now just does the bidding of the far left, fusing Obama's foreign policy to Bernie Sanders' domestic policy. Come on, man. This is reckless. It's counterproductive. It's unconstitutional or a constitutional at a minimum. These are all these the, even Democrats have used the words reckless and counterproductive and unconstitutional to describe President Biden's student debt forgiveness plan. This plan benefits the affluent, the rich and the wealthy at the expense of students who work to pay off their debts, parents who save for their kids education, or as I mentioned before, veterans who serve their country and earn GI Bill benefits. President Biden should not do this. He knows he should not do this. He knows he does not have the authority to do this, and yet he's doing it anyways. Why? Well, in the first instance, he's afraid, I believe, of the far left wing of his own party. He's doing their bidding. And second, he thinks he can get away with it. Who's going to hold him accountable? The corporate media? No. The democratically controlled Congress who goes along? with whatever he wants? No. They think they can get away with it. They think they can tweet and gaslight their way out of this and the general economic mess that they've created. And by extension, they think we're stupid, okay? We have to hold them accountable. The only way to do this is with a Republican-controlled House that conducts serious, sober oversight of the executive branch that closes any legislative loopholes that exist, whether in the HEROES Act of 2003 or the original Higher Education Act, a Republican-controlled Congress that dramatically reduces the role of the federal government in higher education because this debt cancellation is an admission against interest that the federal government's role in higher education is not improving things for graduates of higher education. And we need a Republican-controlled Congress to rescind the insane amount of emergency authority that Congress has given to the presidency. I get it. That stuff is not sexy. It doesn't make for a good campaign ad. But that is the work, the, the, the unglamorous work that needs to be done, the, 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 the unglamorous repairing of our broken constitutional order that needs to be done. We need to take all of this power that we've given to the executive branch and restore it, return it to Article 1, to the legislative branch. Because the status quo just creates chaos. Having presidents wield this much authority willy-nilly creates absolute chaos in our system. 
and it's unhealthy for America, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you have to see how that is unhealthy for America.